Hello and a very warm welcome to the webinar. We are extremely excited here at Squid to discuss the latest release. It's the Squid solution you all know and love, but now lets you connect to every data source within your enterprise. In the webinar, we'll be introducing Squid, talking about Squid Platform in a little bit more detail, showing you a demo, and also how you can access it for yourself. So let's get started. Let's move on to some introductions first of all. So I shall start with myself. My name is Matt Potts. I work in Squid in the UK. Uh, my job role is pre-sales solutions engineer for Europe. And uh, within my job role, I help work with customers to help them understand the value of Squid throughout their life cycle. I'm also joined today by Ben. Hey everyone, um, I'm a software engineer at Squid. Um, that means I, I work on the Squid product. Um, I've, I've been working here for about five years and have worked on almost all aspects of the Squid product. And I'm excited to talk to you guys about the Squid platform today. Excellent, thank you, Ben. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at what we're going to be covering today. We'll start off with introducing Squid, we'll then move on, talk about the Squid platform, show you a demo of the solution uh, before we wrap things up at the end. So, first of all, a little bit of background. Okay, so there's a couple of key value points here about Squid. Uh, one of the things is you know, don't force people to behave the way computers work. And the second one is that we create apps that work the way people behave. Now, these are two guiding principles for Squid as a company. It's why we exist. Squid got started because enterprise software can be difficult for people to use. We discovered that clients required heavy customization in order to have a user experience that was intuitive for their workforce and tailored towards their specific business operations, even though the functions of the core application were solid. I think we've probably all experienced working with applications that are great at what they're doing in terms of business processing, but aren't always the easiest tools to use. So as a business, we spent a lot of time and a lot of effort customizing our own solution for clients. So we felt it was important that we could iterate rapidly. So that's why we created Squid, to help deliver a high degree of customization quickly and easily without going back to developers. If we have to go down the route of custom code development, we all know that that takes time and can often cost a lot of money. So today, Squid is no longer just a customization tool, it's a platform for building bespoke cloud applications. Applications that work the way your company functions intuitive so that people easily understand them. So Squid is a cloud user experience platform for anyone to rapidly create bespoke applications without code. So what does that mean? Well, three, three things. First of all, the cloud user experience platform. It's about building applications in the cloud that sit atop of your enterprise software systems of record. And that, that means you don't have to rip and replace your current systems. You can actually use all of the systems you, you have currently and then use Squid to sit on top of that to build applications that are amazing for your, your users to use. Um, it, it, it means you don't have to go ahead and rewrite all of these systems that you have. So then the second point, bespoke applications, it's about software that acts the way your people work. Um, yeah, you, you don't have to force people to, to work the way your software built. There, there's, there's so much software out there that um, is just people don't know how to use and it's not intuitive. So with Squid, you can actually build software around your systems that work the way people work. And the third point, no code, is about involving business users in the application development process. Um, business users are, are much closer to the, the actual processes that they use. Um, with IT, there's often a, a, a big backlog. And so if we allow the people who are actually closer to the processes to build the applications, what we get is, is better software. So let's now move on and talk about the actual Squid platform itself. So again, a little bit of background before we move on to a demo. So businesses use Squid to develop powerful systems of engagement. So as we just mentioned, we sit on top of the system of record within your organization. Squid apps can be hosted on different infrastructure as a service platforms, including Salesforce and the Squid platform that we'll talk more about shortly. Squid customers can leverage their existing data to create innovative new apps with dramatically improved user experience. So you see the diagram here, which is talking about the Squid platform. So let's just break that down at a high level into two core components, and then Ben will explain 
explain those in a bit more detail. So first of all, we have Squid Core. So this is where we connect to our systems of record that we've just spoken about. So things like SAP, Google, Salesforce, Microsoft. And this is where we can connect to the data and actually build our user experience. Then on the Squid platform, that's how we then actually deploy those applications to our, our lines of business, so HR, sales, customer support, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so, so you can really think of Squid Core as the Squid application that, that you use as an administrator to build Squid pages and the application that your users use to run the applications that you build. So when you think of Squid, think, think of Squid Core. The, that is the application that runs inside of your browser and it, it's what allows you to create squid models, it lets you build UI components, arrange those UI components, it lets you design themes and create processes with the action framework. So when you think of the application of squid, think of the, what we have in the blue box there, squid core. Um, what, what the squid platform is, or um, the platform that runs the squid application, um, think of that as, as the infrastructure, the, the cloud infrastructure that does all the hosting and the deployment and handles security, um, user grouping, permissions, all, all of those things. So um, the, the platform is, is kind of something that, that we take care of for you at Squid and it's something that you don't have to worry about. Um, but it's, it's the un underpinning that runs the, the Squid, Core plot, um, Squid Core application. Okay, we're, we're getting ready to jump into our demo, but I want to explain a few concepts first before we do. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is a squid site. Um, and you access your squid sites at yoursubdomain.squidsite.com. Um, each site is assigned a subdomain. Um, when you sign up for a squid trial, it'll be appended by a suffix of your region and then the word trial.squidsite.com. Um, once you become a customer of Squid, uh, you can get rid of that trial portion and it will be just your subdomain.squidsite.com. Now, in, in later releases of Squid, we do plan on allowing you to use your own fully custom subdomain or your fully custom domain um, for your Squid site. Um, now, remember, there's, there's no centralized login page for Squid sites. Um, you always access your Squid site at your subdomain.squidsite.com. Now, a little bit more about what a squid site is. Um, you can think of a squid site as just the collection of all your configuration that makes the apps that, that you're, you're building. Um, so typically, you would have a single site for your entire company. Now, some companies may want to use more than one site, um, but typically, there's, there's just one per company. So the next thing you want to do is choose which region or data center you want your squid site to run in. The squid platform is built so that it can run in multiple data centers in multiple regions. Um, so you get to choose which geographical region you want your squid site to run in. We're launching the squid platform with uh, in, data, in data centers in the United States, Europe, and Australia. Squid runs on a subscription model so, um, or the software as a service model. So that means that you don't have to run Squid on any of your infrastructure or servers at your company. Squid handles that all for you. Uh, what you would pay is a subscription to Squid services. Running a Squid site on the Squid platform requires purchasing a subscription from Squid. Um, then you have to connect to your data. So your data wherever it is. If that data is inside of your data center or that data center is in the cloud, whether that's in Salesforce or SAP or Dynamics or you have your own REST APIs, you can connect to your data wherever it is. All right, let's get started with the demo. All right, so let's go into the demo. The first thing I want to do is sign up for my Squid site. So the first piece of information we need is the, the subdomain that you want to use for your Squid site. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use Platform Webinar. And so I'll be able to access my Platform Webinar in the trial at platformwebinar.us-trial.squidsite.com. So put in some information about myself and then enter my username. And this 
only has to be unique within your site so you can enter something easy like your first name. Okay, so we'll put in our company name. And then here's where we would select the, the region that we wanted our squid site to be hosted in. So since I live in the United States, I'll put United States. And presumably I could choose the UK. Uh, yes, or uh, it might be uh, Frankfurt or something like that. Yeah. Okay, somewhere in Europe. Excellent. Okay, now that we've entered that information, um, Squid setting up our site and we should receive an email with a link in it to continue the sign up process. So if we go ahead and click on that link, now Squid asks us to set a password. So I'll go ahead and set a password. And that's it. We're signed up and we're ready to start configuring our Squid site. So for this demo, what I want to do is connect to some sample data on odata.org and build a site that's kind of like an online store that will have some products that we'll be able to browse and actually we'll be able to look at some data about, about customers. Um, so this is, this is going to be a very simple demo. Obviously, um, you can do a lot more with Squid, but this definitely will illustrate how these concepts work. So the first thing we want to do is create a master page. Um, a master page is, is going to let us have a shared navigation and branding experience for the rest of our pages. You can associate child pages with master pages um, and, and have that consistent look and feel and navigation. So let's go ahead and create that now. So with my master page, Ben, can I adapt it so that it looks um, consistent with my enterprise branding and theming? Uh, yes, that's, you, you, can, you can definitely do that with a master page. Um, and what's nice about that is you don't have to go ahead and redo that work for every page that you make. And if, you wanna, if your branding department decides to change all their branding, which I'm sure is very unusual, um, you could only have to do that once. Okay, now that we've finished building out our master page, we can go ahead and preview it. We just click the preview button here. There we have it. We have our navigation up at the top. And I also added a little user menu so we can quickly get to our settings pages and um, get back into the squid setup. So the next thing we want to do is actually connect to some data. So to add a data source, we go to configure and then click the new data source button. And this is where it lists the available data source types that we can connect to. You can see we have some Amazon data connectors. We've got Google, Microsoft, SAP, Salesforce. And we also have some more generic standards based connectors like OData and REST. So for this demo, I'm going to connect to one of the sample data sources on odata.org. So I'm going to call this data source my store data. And I'm going to go to the next step. And now to connect, configuring an OData data source is actually quite easy. We just need the URL or endpoint for that OData source. So I can, I'm going to go ahead and paste in that URL. It's going to services.odata.org. And then we go ahead and configure the authentication. Now these, since these are sample services, they don't require any authentication. So we can just go ahead and click Save. And there we have it. We've uh, created our data source connection, and we can start building out pages that connect to this data. So I'm going to go back to my pages list. And the first thing I'm going to do is, can, is build a page that lists my customers. So we'll call this customers. And we'll use a master page. And we'll go ahead and connect to 
the master page I just built. And now we can go create a model based on the data source I just created. So we add a new model. We'll call this customers. We'll connect to my store data and then we can actually look at the lists of available objects to connect to. And you can see this sample data source has seven uh, objects that we can read and write data from. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to the person object since this one's about our customers. And once we do that, we can actually select the fields that we want to connect to. So I'm going to pull in the name of a person, and then I'm going to pull in their age and gender. So now we've built out our entire app. We've got a master page and then three page, child pages that use that master page. One that shows products for our store, one that shows our product categories, and one that shows our customers. And we can preview each one of those pages and see what the page looks like. So if I go to the products page, I can see a list of the products that we offer. If I go to the categories page, I can see the categories that we're pulling in from our OData data source. And if I go to the customers page, I can see a list of, of the customers and some of their information. So what we want to do next is actually expose these pages to our users. So to do that, we use the concept of routes and apps. Routes are how we connect a URL on your Squid site. So let's say it was um, you know, platformwebinar.squidsite.com slash products. Would we, that we would tell that to go to the products page. Or if it was slash categories, we would tell that to go to the categories page. And an app is really just a grouping of routes that share the same base URL. So let's go ahead and set some of this up. So we go to the apps navigation and we can go ahead and create a new app. So for this app, we want to create an app for managing all of our objects. So that means categories, customers, and products. We also want to allow our employees to um, have access to the customer data and the products, but not adjust the categories. And then finally, we want to expose our listing of products publicly to um, anyone unauthenticated on the internet. So we'll go ahead and build out apps that, that will do that. So the first app we want to do is our management console that everyone can use. So let's go ahead and say, call it management. and we'll give it a default page. Let's just take the default page to our master page and create that app. So what this does is it says slash management will go to the master page. So we can go ahead and try that out. If we type squidsite.com slash management it goes ahead and pulls up our master page. We want this app to actually be able to get at our categories page. So we'll add a new route and connect the slash categories route to our categories page. Once we do that, we can see that slash management slash categories will go to our categories page. And when we try it out, we can see that now that that route, the management slash categories, has been linked to the category squid page that we built. 
what we can do next is add some apps for our um, employees to use and a public app for that, that will just show our product listing. So let's go ahead and set that up as well. Okay, so now we've got some apps created. Let's fix our navigation on our master page. Right now we, d we didn't configure these navigations to go to the correct places, so let's go ahead and fix that. So if we edit our master page, we can configure our customers to go to slash and go to our products. We'll go to the app URL we set and sl slash shop. In our categories, go to management slash categories. Now let's go ahead and preview that and see if we set those up correctly. So our customers link goes to our customers page. Our products link goes to our products page. And our categories link goes to our categories page. So now we've successfully set up our apps and our navigation. The next thing we want to do is, is invite some users to to use our Squid site as, as authenticated users. So to add users to Squid, we go to Configure, then go to the Users tab, and just add some new users. So I'm going to go ahead and add two new users. First one, I'll, I'll go ahead and add you, Matthew, or Matt. I'll put my email address in here so that I get the confirmation email. And for now, we'll add Matthew as an admin. And we'll go ahead and add Adam Haskew as an admin as well. Go ahead and save that. OK, so we've created these two new users. When I go check my email, I should get email invites for both those those users since I sent them to bennettsquid.com so now since those users are configured as admins they have the same ability as me to configure the site and add new users and um, build out their squid site as they please but we don't want um, Adam and Matt to to be admins um, we want them to just have the standard employee profile. So this is where we, we can stop and talk a little bit about profiles. Profiles are how you can determine who has access to what parts of your squid site. Now out of the box your squid site comes with three standard profiles. The admin profile which by default gets access to everything. Um, the standard profile which by default does not get access to anything, but is what you would typically give out to your um, employee users. And then the public profile, and this is a special profile that determines what people who have not even signed into your site will have access to if, if they go to your site. So what I like to do for creating new profiles is you can actually pull up a standard profile and clone it. And we'll go ahead and call this profile the employee profile. Now that that's set up, 
we can go ahead and determine what permissions people who are in the employee profile have. So we don't want them to be able to configure the site. If we checked this box, that would allow them to build squid pages and have full access to the squid site. But we really just want them to use squid pages. And here we can actually say which apps they can access. So we're going to let the employee profile access the employees app and the online store app. And we'll also let them access the My Store Data data source, which contains all of our data. So let's go ahead and save that. And then let's go back to profiles and configure the public profile. So for the public profile, notice by default it starts out with no access to nothing. Um, so we want to go ahead and give them access to our online store and so that they can get at the products list, give them access to the My Store data source. Okay, so let's, let's assign the, the profiles. Let's assign Matthew's profile. Let's make him an employee as well. Okay, now, now that we've assigned Adam and Matthew the employee profile, let's make sure our pages respond correctly and don't show them navigation to, um, to the pages that they don't have access to. Now they still won't be able to access the pages even if they did have navigation to those pages, but it would return an error message and we don't want that to be their experience. So what we can do is edit our master page. And for the categories, uh, navigation item, we can add conditional rendering to say only render if the running user has a profile of admin. All right, so when we go to our management app, we can see that we have all three of the navigation items. But if we log out and log in as Matt, we can see that we do have access to the customers and the products, but don't have access to the categories. Let's make sure that our navigation works right for our public users. So I need to log, log back in as me, since I'm the only one who has access to edit the pages. Let's edit this master page one more time. And so for the customers, we don't want our public users to have access to this. We can actually add rendering to say, only show this if your profile is admin. or. Your profile is employee. And we can say any of the conditions are met. Okay, so now if we log out, since we're not logged in, we go to slash shop. We can see that we can see the products list and we only see the products navigation. Um, so that's just a quick demo of creating a site that has access, can be publicly ac accessed for some information, and then we can dole out permissions to different profiles and users and add users. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the demo of the Squid platform. Um, Matt? So thank you very much, Ben, for that excellent demo. We are really excited about this release of Squid platform given unparalleled access to build amazing bespoke user experiences on top of all enterprise systems of record. We can't wait to see what uh, our customers are going to start delivering with Squid Platform.
And don't forget that you can get started on the free trial with the URL that you see on the screen here. Also, don't forget to get in touch with us and follow us on social media. Um, so thank you very much for watching.